Hi, everybody, and we are now recording. We are going to be busting some sleep and nutrition myths tonight. We're super excited to be here for you, and we will send everybody who registered for our seminar the recording afterwards, so you don't have to worry about taking notes. You can watch it later. And um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please put them in the chat. We'll ask everyone to stay on mute until the end, and we'll answer questions at that point. All right. Are you ready, Kelly? We'll jump on in. I'm ready. Perfect. Well, hi, everybody. I really appreciate you taking your taking time out of your day to be here with us. I am Dawn McGee, your nutrition evangelist. I am in the Boston area. And so maybe today you are here because you are ready to take your health to the next level. Maybe you're here to learn some tips and tricks. Maybe you're here because you want some better sleep at night. Um, whatever the reason, that's okay. You are very welcome. So let me take a minute and introduce myself. I am a nutrition evangelist, which means that I am super passionate about nutrition and making sure that what we put into our bodies is good for us for fuel. It fuels our bodies, it fuels our brain, it fuels, fuels our souls. Um, I have been a certified and licensed nutrition coach for over 10 years now. And while I love great food and I love being fit, you can see by some of the pictures on the screen that I wasn't always healthy and fit. Uh, from a lot of my adult life, I struggled to maintain a healthy weight in a healthy way. And if you have been on the diet roller coaster, you know what I mean. Um, and so if that's where you are, please know that I can relate. I am an author. I am a mom to an 18 year old. I am a wife. I wear a lot of hats. And so I am super busy. And maybe you are too. If you are, give me a one in the chat because we can, we can relate on that. Um, and sometimes when we're busy, super busy, we think that we don't have time to do the things that we need to do to take care of ourselves. Now, if that's you and you can relate to that, pop a two into the chat. Um, so let's, Callie, let's have you introduce yourself. Great. Thank you so much, Don. I always love to share a bit about why I do this work. Uh, personally, I spent the first 20 years of my career working in high tech. And after experiencing many stress-filled, sleepless nights, I decided to study therapeutic applications of yoga and meditation, as well as health and wellness coaching, and mostly to help myself heal from both sleep deprivation and burnout. Uh, it's also now my 10th year in practice, and I am a board-certified coach who specializes in sleep issues. So like Dawn with nutrition, personally, I do know what it's like to struggle with sleep and also how much better I feel and function on all levels now that I've figured out how to sleep well. And so my mission is to help other stressed out people with busy lives do just that. And I especially have success with people who have a hard time falling asleep because of stress and those worrisome thoughts that, that keep us from falling asleep. I prefer to focus on what's effective, what's practical, and what's permanent. So um, I don't deal in a lot of the typical uh, tips and tricks for sleep because in my experience, that's really the fastest way to not make progress. Um, so if you're a sleep struggler who wants to let that struggle go, uh, go ahead and pop a two in the chat. Let me know that, that you can relate to, to that and, um, I'll toss it back to you, Dawn. Very good. All right, let's dig in. So if you're here today, you're probably here because you're looking for some solutions either to nutrition or sleep challenges or both. And you may be finding a lot of conflicting information out there in the marketplace. So today we're going to break down some common myths and figure out how to move forward, right? We're going to give you information that's science-based that you can put into practice today so that you can improve the quality of your daily life. I'm a big believer in 1% improvement every day. We don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. 
right? We, when you look back in a year, if you just make tiny incremental changes, you will be amazed at how far you've come. And at the end, if we have time, we've got some offers for you and we'll wrap up with an additional bonus tip. So if you're ready, drop a me in the chat. Okay, so before we go to those myths, let's start with where we are today and some of the underlying issues that many people have. Chronic disease and health struggles, including these that made our short list, are so prevalent in our society, but they don't have to be. So you can put a yes in the chat if you struggle with sleep or fatigue, if you experience issues with digestion, if you have felt depressed and or anxious, if you're dealing with unwanted weight gain, or if you have felt foggy in your brain or have difficulty concentrating or remembering. And if you've experienced any of those, and maybe sometimes many of those together, right? You open social media or you talk with people and you hear all sorts of different things about what to do. So it's confusing, right? And when it comes to improving your sleep and or your nutrition, you can certainly spend a fortune on gadgets, on you know what Dawn and I call magic pills and other quick fixes and remedies. Yet it's highly unlikely that these solutions work long term and maybe sometimes they don't work in the context of your busy life. And believe it or not, there is an approach applicable both to how you eat and how you sleep that is clearer and more compassionate, that is affordable, and most importantly, I think sustainable for so many years to come. So no more berating yourself for waking up at 3 a.m. because your mind is busy chattering or for having a glass of wine or a slice of pizza. No more feeling unproductive because you don't have enough daily energy or focus. No more limiting your social life by saying, I can't go out because either I'm on a diet or because I'm just too tired. And no more guilt over not modeling a healthy lifestyle for your kids. Instead, you can be proud, proud of how you show up for your colleagues and your family, proud of how you fit into your favorite clothes, and proud of all the energy that's returned to your life. Just imagine for a moment how amazing that would feel. To get those favorite pants to button up easily again, but also feeling more accomplished because your daily energy is through the roof. You can spend time with your kids in the evenings again without dragging or passing out early. How? By ending the uncertainty over how to eat and sleep well, by taking that approach that's compassionate, adaptable, and sustainable for years to come. So that said, Dawn, go ahead and take us through myth number one for nutrition now. All right. So here is the myth that we hear a lot. Let's jump in. If you skip breakfast, you can eat more for dinner. Well, not really, but that's no surprise to you if you're here today. So when you're skipping breakfast and some people call it intermittent fasting, what you're doing is you're just putting yourself on a diet, right? Because here's the thing, all diets, weight loss plans, whatever you call them, they have you doing the same thing over and over and over, you're depriving yourself, right? So skipping breakfast, I mean, really, who likes to skip breakfast? I don't. Um, I like to eat. And we know that none of that works in the long term, right? It doesn't serve to feed your body, your brain, or your soul. And all three of those are important for that long-term sustainable lifestyle. So what diets don't tell you is that getting to your optimal nutrition is about blood sugar stabilization, which is this chart that we've got up here right now. And they don't tell you that because it works and it works for the long term. And if you had something that worked for the long term, well, you wouldn't be buying into the next diet and feeding that billion dollar industry. Instead, we would be eating in a way that fuels our body, our brain and our soul. We eat protein, fat, and carbs every three to four hours. 
We call it PFC every three. We eat until we're satisfied and then we stop. And then we eat again when we're ready to eat, when our blood sugar starts to drop. And for me, when I start daydreaming about the leftover pizza in my fridge, then I know, I know it's time for me to eat another good balanced meal. And that's where you want to be. You want to be in balance in that middle portion where it says homeostasis. You want to have your blood sugar stable where your body releases fat and protects your lean muscle. You don't have cravings anymore. All of my clients say, Don, where did my sugar cravings go? Well, they went away because your blood sugar is now stable and you have more energy because you don't have that spike and that crash. And that is super important. And that's where we want to be right in homeostasis. Now, the key here is both balance and consistency. So you want to get to your optimal health. Because of that, we want to, we don't look at meals being different and snacks when you're eating five to six times a day, they're all about the same size, right? They're all have protein, fat, and carbs. Um, so no, don't skip breakfast so that you can eat more at dinner. Cause what's going to happen is in the morning, You'll be hungry, you'll be cranky, um, not so good for the home front. And then at dinner, you're going to spike your blood sugar for having eaten too much. And then you're going to crash. And again, you're going to be sluggish. You're going to be cranky. Not a good, not a good picture, right? So let's take a little bit deeper look at what happens when you're inconsistent in your meals, otherwise known as the cycle of yo-yo dieting, because that's the path that leads you down. So when you Start off in that top right-hand side with cutting calories or carbs, super popularly these days, right? Um, I was there for many years myself. I, I was a diet queen. My first diet, I, when I came home from college, my mom said, ah, and put me on a diet. It's a, it's a horrible thing. I'm so fortunate that that's not the legacy that I'm leaving for my kiddo, um, so if you, but if you can relate with, you know, the diets and the, the cutting, give me a five in the chat. Let's talk about what this cycle looks like and what happens to your body. When you cut your calories or your carbs, whatever you're doing on your diet, your blood sugar drops. And so your body burns muscle. When that happens, you're even more hungry than you were before. You've got cravings because your blood sugar isn't stable. Your hormones aren't balanced and your energy crashes. So, so human nature says, well, we're going to overeat because we're starving. We don't like being deprived. Maybe we'll add carbs back in. Um, maybe we'll just kind of go all out with the, the pizza and the ice cream and the, and the whatever. Um, and then your blood sugar spikes and your body stores fat because it can't use all of that. And what happens in this cycle over and over again is that your metabolism slows down. It's just, it's not a healthy way to live. It's not good for your body. It's not good for your brain. And it's not good for your soul. So what I will tell you right now is that today is the last time you have to worry about yo-yo dieting, because when you leave here today, you will know about PFC3 and you, once you know it, you can't unknow it. You can choose not to do it, but you can't unknow it. And so, so now you'll know how to fuel your body. Now, before we get to that, let's talk about the corollary of this myth for sleep. Thanks, Dawn. So important. And obviously eating late is going to impact sleep and blood sugar also impacts sleep. So these are so so interesting and so related. So yes, here's the corollary myth for sleep. If you don't sleep well all week, you can catch up on the weekend. <laughs> um, so too little sleep is certainly a risk factor for a lot of the chronic diseases we see, including hypertension, diabetes and obesity, heart disease, stroke, and even death. Uh, so wanting to catch up on sleep seems to make sense. And we're talking here about something called sleep debt. It's also sometimes called sleep deficit. Like our bodies are a bank account. And sleep debt is essentially the number of hours your body needs versus what you actually get. Of course, like a bank account, withdrawals are cumulative. So the hour or two you miss a night adds up. And your body, you know, it can adapt and you can feel fine only up to a point. 
So let's look at this more closely and bring in some of that research. If like a third of Americans, you get fewer than six hours a night on five weekdays, in theory, that's 10 hours for you to make up in two days, assuming we use the eight hour per night recommendation. I'm not sure about you, but that feels like time I don't have on the weekends. <laughs> Uh, I have other things to be doing than sleeping. And regardless, the research shows that it takes your body up to four days to recover from each hour lost. Okay, we're coming up on daylight savings ending, right? So we might have a very real experience of that pretty soon. Um, what's also true is that after 10 days of sleep restriction and 10 days of sleeping as much as they wanted, participants in a research study were not yet fully recovered. Now, what's recovered, right? Recovery from cognitive dysfunction, metabolic dysfunction, and detrimental changes to how your body uses insulin, to name a few. So you might subjectively feel a bit better from getting closer to your recommended seven to nine hours for those one or two nights on the weekend, but it's not enough to undo the damage. And that's because your body doesn't see the seven to nine hours of sleep per night as an average over the week. It's not like moving a calendar appointment around, right, when you don't have time. Much like eating, your body craves regularity. And irregularity can also cause longer-term sleep problems because it disrupts your circadian rhythm, right, which is your internal sleep clock. And your body might actually start to move melatonin secretion a bit later. And this can be why you sometimes fail at sleeping, eat, sleeping in on those weekends, even when you want to. Right? Your body gets trained into a rhythm. So the very best approach is to view sleep as preventative medicine. And just as you eat every so many hours, you also prioritize your sleep each and every night. So, Don, back to you for nutrition myth number two. Thanks, Callie. It's it's true. And, you know, the sleep or the sleep deficit has a big impact on your optimal health. It ties directly into the, the nutrition piece. Um, but to follow on from our first myth about skipping breakfast, let's talk about nutrition myth number two, which is if you work out harder, you don't have to eat healthier. We call this outrunning your fork and you can't outrun your fork. So here's a simple visual about how to keep your meals balanced on your plate. We talked about PFC three and you eat in threes and the foundation is the food, right? What food do you have on your plate? I like to say that great abs are made in the kitchen. Um, so we talked about the physiology and how important it is to keep your blood sugar balanced and the concept of balance, it applies to exercise too, right? You just, you can't outrun your fork. Um, you still need to feed your body, your brain, and your soul. And so the foundation of learning how to win with your food and balancing your blood sugar, PFC every three, is essentially understanding how to take the right macronutrients, which are your proteins, your fats, and your carbs in the right portion size and the right frequency. So your um, portion size will vary depending upon whether you're a man or a woman and, and your size, but we like to talk about right sizing your portions. And so for that, we use your hand. And a lot of people have seen this before, and that's because it works, right? Your hand is in proportion to your body. And so when you, know, you, you take your palm size as your protein, you know, about and about this thick. That's the chicken that's on the plate right there. And then your carb is about a fist size, which you can see as your rice portion on the plate. And then your fat portion is like a, you know, a thumb size, which are the slices of, of avocado, if you put them all together. And then absolutely add on spices to make it taste good. Add in um, leafy green vegetables or other vegetables to, to build up bulk, to get some fiber into your diet, all, all of the things, right? And then the pacing is also important. You start eating 
within an hour of when you wake up and you eat every three to four hours from there up until about an hour before you go to bed. And as I said before, you, you eat when you're ready to eat and you stop when you're satisfied, but not full. And it's super simple. You get to have lots of food. Nobody feels like they're on a diet. You're not hungry. You're not deprived. And for the most part, you're not giving up your glass of wine with dinner either. So there are, there are three criteria that I like people to use anytime they're looking at a program. So number one, is it based in science? Number two, can I do it for the rest of my life? Is it sustainable? And number three, which I would argue is the most important, is would I let my kids do it? And for most people, that's the one that they go, oh, hmm. And if you wouldn't let your kids do it, then you shouldn't do it either because we all have the same bodies and we should all treat them with love. So this meets all three with a resounding yes. And all of my clients agree. So let's take just a sec and, and talk about what some of them have said. They talk about losing their sugar cravings and all the good food that they get to eat, which is such a change from the diet mindset. Someone who's been on a hundred diets in their life has finally stopped dying. It's pretty amazing. No more bloating. What a change by eating five balanced meals a day. Once you start understanding it, then you can take it and turn it into a lifestyle. So we ran a pilot with 500 people last year. And while this is not necessarily a weight loss program, when you get to your optimal health internally, you will get to your optimal weight. So the average weight loss was 14 pounds. People had more energy, no cravings, they lost inches, and most importantly, they felt that it was easy. So let's go ahead and talk about sleep myth number two. Thanks, Don. So this, this is a fun one because I always hear about this unwinding that happens before bed, right, with the bedtime routine. So sleep myth number two is if you unwind before bed, you're going to sleep well. Um, and if you've had a very busy day, which most of us have these days, slowing down before bed is, is such a good habit to have. And a bedtime routine is something I consider part of foundational sleep hygiene, along with several other practices. Compared to your day, a bedtime routine is probably quite restful and likely necessary. Now, you can imagine I dislike the term unwinding because it implies that we're wound up in the first place. So let's take a closer look at, at what it means to be wound up. And here's our, our day from about 7 a.m. to 10 in our energy gauge. So let's say you wake up at 7 a.m. And then you go, go, go all day. You know, first at work, then at home, whether or not those are in the same place. So your energy gauge, your, your, the energy that's being put out, taken in, right? It's just, it's just going up, up, up. And then let's say by some magic, because honestly, does a bedtime routine happen every night? Probably not. But let's say it does for the sake of argument. So you do slow down and you rest for a whole hour before bed. So that brings our energy gauge down just a little bit. But if you can see, right, how much rest or how much did that rest that little bit before bed do, right? Your energy is still uh, at a high level. So it's super likely that your mind and your body or both are still highly stimulated, right? The mind and the body, as you probably know from experience, must both uh, be in a state of rest for you to be able to surrender to sleep, right? So uh, both Western evidence-based studies and thousands of year old yogic systems identify the number one root cause of chronic sleeplessness as an overstimulation or hyper arousal of the nervous system. And you might have felt this when you initially can't fall asleep or when you wake at 3 a.m. for no good reason with mind chatter or if you're up too early in the morning. This is your nervous system locked in that high gear that you know we've all trained ourselves into by just how we are living our lives. So here's what we want energy to look like ideally, 
We want it to naturally rise and fall throughout the day and just follow the natural nightly downshift into bedtime, as you see there around 10 p.m. And this means finding ways to support and restore energy when we're feeling low, uh, rather than powering through by adding more stimulation, right? Some people choose to do that with foods, with drinks, right? Sugar, caffeine, a very common way to do it. Other people just, it's sheer willpower, right? Just battling through feeling tired. And the good news is that you can decide to train your system differently. It's fairly simple, but it doesn't mean it's easy, right? This is where most people who are struggling with sleep need some help. And I call this rest rhythm. And I do share four fast ways to restore this natural rest rhythm in my Sleep Academy course, which I'll tell you about later. Um, but I do wanna say that learning how to rest well is a prerequisite for consistently high quality sleep. And I think this is what a lot of people miss, right? They're focused very much on the nighttime, but the rest and recovery that happens in the daytime really matters. Yeah, it's very much like the pacing of your food, right? You can't Absolutely. just sit there and eat all day long. You you have a natural rhythm to your blood sugar and your food, just like the sleep. So And mealtimes are a great time to rest, right? right? You nourish yourself. Take that time. Exactly. Maybe without a screen in front of you. Crazy. I know. I know. <laughs> So what's next? So we've only had a short time to share information with you today, and we hope that you found them useful and that you're excited to put them into practice. But what if you're ready for more? So if food is your entry point, I've got a great offer for you. And if sleep is your entry point, Callie has a great offer for you. Plus, everyone gets a copy of our myth guides and the recording of the session too. So I've got two offers for you tonight, which I'll go through very briefly. Number one is my signature program, Reclaim Your Life One Bite at a Time. It's self-paced. Most people finish it in about eight weeks, but you can take your time. You'll get an email with a new video from me every three days or so with your next topic. Plus, you get an in invite to my private Facebook community um, just for our Reclaim members. You get our Reclaim Your Life journal, which is a 60-page companion workbook. You'll be able to get more details about each topic as well as jot down your goals, take notes, and track how you're doing, um, plus a success tracker, a workout calendar, a meal planner, a shopping organizer, and all of these things, when offered separately, the total investment is over $3,000. But for everyone who's registered here today, you can get access to all of them for an investment of just $4.97. Now, Maybe you're not quite ready to jump all in, but maybe you want to tiptoe in. So you can grab the workbook only, which, you know, again, is over 60 pages. You've got, it's not blank pages. It's all part of the curriculum. Um, you've got fill in the blank pages, explanations about each topic, um, lots of education and worksheets that you can use to do the self-paced course on your own. And as Pam said, that was actually her favorite part of the program. When you put pen to paper, it helps your brain to focus and sort of work through things. Um, normally 175 for anyone who's registered here tonight, just $99. Now that's for your, your basic nutrition entry point. And if sleep is your entry point to better health, Callie has an amazing offer for you too. Thanks, Don. Uh, so first, just for being here today, I'm going to be sending you my Lifestyle Habits Wrecking Your Sleep ebook, which contains more myths that you can learn about other pitfalls to avoid when it comes to sleeping better. And, um, and, and so you can actually sleep better, right? And if sleep is the entry point you'd like to focus on now, I'd like to invite you to enroll in my Self-Paced Sleep Academy course. I created this roughly six week solution to help busy people who are sick of stressing about their sleep. And if you're tired of the toll that poor sleep is taking on your productivity, your relationships and your health, this course is just jam packed with practical guidance, 
about how to transform your sleep all natural and as Don and I have been talking about with much less work, right? So it is sustainable. There are 12 at least downloadable worksheets in there because again, putting pen to paper does matter, right? You get to work through some of that. Uh, the four fast techniques that I mentioned for restoring rest rhythm plus techniques that you can use, start using immediately to move your energy up and down without sugar, without caffeine. Um, and essentially a total realigning of your mind and your body with those natural rhythms. So that sleep comes easy, comes without pills and products. And because I'm blending coaching with therapeutic yoga and meditation, I can guarantee you're not going to find this mix of content anywhere else. And I also know you'll look forward to exploring the lessons and putting what you learn to, to use each week People who do follow this method get real results that last, and I do interact with people uh, throughout, uh, throughout the course. Because you're here today, you can get access to the course for just $197, that's $200 off the regular course price. And you know, if you're someone who can use some accountability or think you might have some questions about how does this material apply to me and my particular sleep and energy concerns, you can get more help because for a limited time, um, you can decide to fast track your sleep and upgrade your course experience by adding three full one hour private coaching sessions with me. And it's over half the price off per session. So if you went all in to transforming your sleep in around six weeks or so, that would cost you around $422. And I know that when I was barely surviving my days, this would have been absolutely priceless priceless to me, but it didn't exist, which is exactly why I created it. So I want you to have a lifetime of consistently refreshing sleep and never have to buy anything related to sleep again. And uh, go ahead, Don, move forward if you will. Yeah, I have pages of testimonials like this. You can certainly check them out on my website, both from the course and private one-on-one uh, -on -one sleep coaching former sleep strugglers who now have a completely different experience of their health, their well-being, and their whole life. And I would love to hear about and see how much someone's life changes once their sleep does. And uh, so that said, I, I want to thank everyone you know, for being here. Uh, we do have a bonus myth buster for you. So if you do have time, please stay on. And if not, and you want to take advantage of our offers, uh, Don will put the info in the chat and you'll definitely get an email with all of the details. Very cool. Thanks, Callie. All right. So here's the bonus myth that we promised you. We've been talking about food and nutrition, sleep and energy. And the truth is these are only two of the plates that you need to keep spinning to feel your very best. So in order to achieve optimal levels of health and well-being, there are six plates that we need to keep spinning. There's nutrition, which we talked a little bit about today. There's exercise or movement. There's water or hydration. There's sleep, which Callie talked about. There's stress and your resiliency to the world around you. And then there's all the supplements or medications that you may be taking um, and it can certainly be hard to keep track of all of them and keep them all spinning. It feels a little bit like a juggling act, right? But just know that when we're living our healthy lifestyle, if we hit a plateau or we fall off the quote unquote wagon in some way, you don't have to go look for your next diet or a new program to try. You just have to figure out which plate has stopped spinning and put it back into motion and adjust that. So I work with my clients starting from the nutrition perspective, and Callie teaches you about this starting from the sleep perspective. We teach you how to spin all these plates, how to eat what you love, have a better relationship with your body, how to sleep well, and wake feeling ready to take on your day. Who's up for that, right? I certainly am. Definitely. So let's do a quick recap, Callie, okay? Sure. All right, to wrap up, let's review everything we've talked about today. We started off with some of the challenges that people face with the confusing messages that are both part of the diet and the sleep industry. Last I looked, the sleep, indus 
sweep aid industry with $30 billion. <laughs> and so we, we hope to have dispelled some of the confusion done from the nutrition perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the nutrition industry is, you know, a multi-billion dollar industry. It's crazy, right? So we yeah. talked about how important it is, is to eat regular PFC meals all day and not skip any meals and the need to focus on your food and all aspects of your health. You just, you can't outrun a bad diet. Exactly. And from the sleep perspective, we talked about the importance of avoiding sleep debt in the first place versus believing you can catch up somehow and the importance of regular rest uh, and the fact that unwinding before bed is an insufficient strategy in and of itself. And both nutrition and sleep fit into this broader health and well-being framework that Dawn presents as the spinning plates, right? And then we wrapped up with a couple of special offers for, for anyone who is part of this event, which you see here. Very cool. So we appreciate your time. We thank you. We hope you got lots of value from today's session, and we're looking forward to helping everyone achieve their optimal health. You'll get the link to re the recording for everyone who registered in your inbox. And if you want to reach out to us with any follow-up questions, our emails are on the screen, and we hope you have a great night. So I'm going to go ahead and end the recording here, and then if there are any questions, we can take them, and we'll wrap up. So.